Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for May 30th, 2020. Happy Saturday to you. I produced a video discussion yesterday, but I forgot to make it public on YouTube. Sorry, it remained unlisted. I post it for our patrons first, and our Hurricane Track insiders, our crowdfunding people, they get it first, and it's unlisted when I do that, and then I have to make it public later, and I thought I did. But I didn't. So anyway, I was working yesterday. I just forgot to make the video public. All right, let's get on with what's going on. This will be pretty short today. I'm still in Waco, Texas, and I'll show you what we did yesterday, uh, wrapping things up after a very, very successful week, I must add. But it's time to uh, leave Waco and start heading home from here. First, though, let's take a look at what's going on. We have Invest Area 92L. And this is sort of your larger hybrid system, subtropical development. It's not purely tropical. The energy is not bundled as well. Uh, nevertheless, 60% chance of development over the next few days. This really only has a couple of days for it to do anything. I'll show you this in more detail in a moment. Meanwhile, here to the south of Guatemala, uh, in the southeastern Pacific, we have, what is this, 91E or something like that. And this should go on to develop a little more, but the main reason that we're worried about this or concerned with it, I hate that word worry, uh, the main impact from this is the best way to describe that, uh, will be rainfall. Heavy rain over portions of Central America here, as is the case with any of these tropical systems, you get a lot of rainfall. Regardless of how much wind they have, they bring a lot of rainfall. So these are the two areas that we are watching. We can see those very clearly on this uh, wonderful satellite animation courtesy of Tropical Tidbits. First of all, this is the system. Oh, geez, why is it purple? Uh, let's go with blue. This is the system out in the Atlantic. And you can see it's got that comma shape to it. It's falling sort of between the cracks of your traditional tropical storm like what we would see that would come off Africa as a tropical wave. Um, and you've seen them before, you know what I'm talking about, but just trying to explain it, that that term subtropical storm, this is what it looks like. I mean, it's not one yet, but this is what I mean. The energy is spread out. It has kind of frontal characteristics associated with it. It's not quite as potent, not as concentrated, whatever. Frontal system moving off the coast of the United States has been really wet here in the Carolinas, the remnants of Bertha a couple of days ago, adding to that. And uh, then down here, you can clearly see this overall disturbed weather pattern associated with the Central American gyre. You've got the trade winds coming in this way, and then you've got this westerly wind coming in this way, part of the monsoon trough, and the overall wind shift associated with this Kelvin wave that's moving through just overall general fertile conditions down here, but it's taken a while for things to get together. Nothing's happening very rapidly. Conditionally, the conditions are not very favorable. It's not August, for example. It's still late May. That being said, there's still enough energy down there that we have to watch this. Again, the biggest threat would be for heavy rain, maybe a quick spin-up of a tropical depression or tropical storm somewhere down there south of Guatemala or El Salvador. And then this entire area of energy just kind of kind of hang out here, bringing rain and just general um, miserable weather, I guess, if you call it that, want to call it that, down in parts of Central America. And in any given day, a piece of this energy could kind of break off and maybe go this way and become a, a tropical cyclone briefly. Maybe a piece rotates up here into the Bay of Campeche and becomes a tropical cyclone, those tend to also come up here off of Honduras and Nicaragua. <clears throat> Can't even say it. Nicaragua to the area here in the Gulf of Honduras. You just never know. But the bottom line, I don't see anything that looks like it's going to develop into a potent hurricane or anything like that. And so we need to just keep our eyes on the possibility of heavy rainfall. We can see these areas depicted very well now on the vorticity signature I really like this analysis. I talk about it a lot. The large spread out nature to our subtropical feature, 92L there to the south and east of Bermuda, which is right there. 
And then the more concentrated but still not quite well organized 91E in the Eastern Pacific. This is a great tool. I love it. We will be using it a lot in the season ahead. All right. Just like this is uh, 850 millibars of the atmosphere, this analysis, this is the GFS model at 850 millibars in the atmosphere. That's about 5,000 feet up. Here are the areas to watch. This is the 92L. This is 91E. Both the sources of energy, and you can clearly see these if we just move through time. There's 24 hours, and notice how 92L begins to weaken up here as we go through time. 48 hours out, it's pretty much done. So it has about 30 hours to go, and that's about it. So at the 48-hour mark, even down here, this is just kind of discombobulated. No one energy source taking over, no pocket of vorticity taking over. We go on to 72 hours. And you, do, you get these little small areas like that right there in the extreme southeast coast of Mexico or region of Mexico, maybe southwest Guatemala. Um, you just never know one of those little vorticity signatures takes over and a very small tropical cyclone develops in the Gulf of Tehuantepec maybe and then out to five days, six days, seven days. Just not much going on. A little small piece of energy right there. You notice that? That's a curious feature right there. See how that moves in towards southeast Louisiana? Yeah, you never know. These little impulses ride along. They come up out of the trades sometimes, you just never know. But no big time, obvious, large tropical waves that are going to develop into a hurricane anytime soon. It's just not that favorable yet. It takes time to get there, which is a good thing, because goodness knows we have enough going on in our part of the world already, that is for sure. Um, and we don't have to have any issues from the tropics right now to add to that. Thank you very much. So all in all, a calm pattern ahead, certainly throughout the weekend. And then, of course, hurricane season officially begins in 48 hours. And to that end, we've been busy out here in uh, Texas. Uh, started off in North Carolina, went to pick up Brent, one of our crowdfunding partners, who helps to fund and lend hands-on help, assistance, not just the money, and the money is what helps to fund the stuff, but we also need help in person from people. I can't do this by myself. So yesterday, we uh, launched the weather balloon uh, over in Corsicana, uh, not far from here in Waco. This is out in a park that we uh, happened to find. I'm just going to kind of skip through this a little bit. This is the view from one of the GoPros that we use. On the payload, the idea, again, is to lift this into the atmosphere. The payload, it weighs about five pounds. There it is going high above Corsicana. Very, very nice, or is it Corsicana? Who knows? Beautiful area, though, I will tell you that. Uh, we launched in the evening. Up it goes, higher and higher, on up into the stratosphere. Here we're about mm, 18,000 feet. Sun was going down. Beautiful evening there, high above Texas. Look at that, just incredible. Very, very cool, high up, high up, high up, oh, wow. Finally, once it gets into the stratosphere, let me show you this, skip through some of these. The uh, upper level winds really start to slow down and then it's like it's just floating there. Look at that, just gorgeous. Imagine this high above a hurricane, that is the idea. We did it once during Hurricane Nate in 2017 but that was at 1.30 in the morning. We want to be able to do it. Um, th look at that. There we go. We're at about 105,000 feet right here above Texas. A record for us. This is the highest we've ever gone. So imagine looking down into a hurricane from that height. That's what we want to do. And the payload has weather sensors on it. It's not just about the video. It measures temperature, humidity, uh, dew point. And, of course, the pressure, and we get down to about 12, 13 millibars up here, way, way high in the stratosphere to the edge of space, very, very little atmosphere, truly incredible to see. Uh, and then the balloon burst. I want to show you that. It's really neat to see. Watch this. You're going to see it burst. There's the balloon shredding. 
almost zero G there for about two to three seconds. Amazing. A little bit of free fall action. Parachute took over. It landed in a field, and uh, we went and picked it up a few hours later. That was an interesting challenge. There it is coming back. It came back a little faster. We think that the balloon kind of got tangled up with the parachute. Uh, nevertheless, it came on down, and we went out into this area uh, after dark and used the incredible uh, technology that we have at our disposal. Let's get back over here. The um, spot locator, which is satellite-based, failed us this time because the payload landed upside down and the spot locator needs to be looking up at the sky. And so we relied on amateur radio beacon, the automatic packet and reporting system, uh, APRS, my call sign, KM4SES, and we were listening to it via radio. We used basic geography and math and understanding astronomy, because we were out at night, directional location, you name it. I mean, I'm just tooting my horn here, but this is the science behind it. We found that thing. It's small. It's the size of a lunchbox in a field out in ranch country in the middle of the night. Well, not quite. It's about 1130, but that's close enough. And we found it. And we used very, very interesting technology, amateur radio to the rescue that time. Really good stuff. Anyway, um, our crowdfunders helped to make this possible, our patrons and uh, other great people helping on the outside. We really appreciate Brent and Mike. And there's other people on our Hurricane Track Insider site that were running uh, information in the background, mathematical equations, you name it, making maps. Uh, Chris and Tim and Mike and others, Cecil, all of it. Steve, you guys know who you are. We appreciate you. It's a team effort. I might be the face of this. Hi. But it's really a team effort, and we appreciate it very much. A lot more to come as we go through the data and the video and all the stuff that we collected out here. This was a very, very good effort by all, and, and, and time and money well spent. It really was. We accomplished a lot, and we are now ready, more ready than we've ever been for the upcoming hurricane season, which begins officially in less than two days. All right, there you have it. So we start traveling back today, as I mentioned. I'll produce another video tomorrow, sometime in the early afternoon probably, and we will go from there. Thanks as always for your support, for your uh, watching and everything, and your, your comments, your feedback. We appreciate it. I know I do. Have a great rest of your weekend ahead. Stay safe out there, all right? It's a crazy world. I want you to be safe so you can come back and watch more of this amazing stuff that we're doing. I'm Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you some more tomorrow.